So we gave quite a bit of love to the sprinters and the ladies over this past weekend in track and field on my channel, but we've got to shift over to the men's middle distance side of things because Yared Nagus has had an incredible start to his 2023 indoor season. And before we get into the goose, I just got to say to you guys, thank you so much for the support on my channel in these recent videos, in these recent weeks. It's meant a lot to me, and it's almost been a newfound sense of motivation to create content on this platform that it's so easy to get distracted from. So thank you guys, and let's get on with the video. So, Yared Nagus. Back-to-back -back indoor American records to start the season. 7.28 in the indoor 3K at Boston University a couple weeks ago. And most recently in the Wanamaker Mile at Milrose, he ran a 3.47.38. And also en route to that broke the indoor 1500 meter American record at 3.33.22, a time which eclipses his current standing 1500 meters personal best outdoors which he set in his season closer of 333.26. That's a 400 difference, but still very, very marginal when you consider that it was in a mile and not a 1500. So that right there just tells you a lot about what Yared Nagus has been up to. He's been setting all time marks, all purpose really, when you consider indoors and or outdoors. And of course, that last 400 meters and last 200 meters of Nagus's mile world record, or American record, excuse me, it was almost a world record, just 37 hundredths off of Yomi Kajelcha's mark. But a 54 second close was absolutely jaw dropping. And a 2594 for the last 200 after having already run that frenetic pace up until then just tells you a lot about what Yara Nagus has in him this season. And to go off of that, it almost feels like this year is a different year for Yared Nagus because he's no stranger to setting big records. You go back to his NCAA years with the University of Notre Dame, and it feels like every time he set a record, a big record, that it didn't really amount to much. He's the indoor 3K record holder at the collegiate ranks, 738, and outdoors at the 1500 meters with 334.36. He set that mark back in 2021, the season which he finished third at the Olympic trials to secure his first ever berth at the Tokyo 2021 games, but he couldn't compete in the games because of a knee injury. So unfortunately, that was all for nothing. And in 2022, back in the indoor season, as I said, that 3K indoor record, 738. And again, that never really amounted to much because in all of that collegiate success that he had time-wise, he never came away with an individual NCAA title. And when you consider other athletes that were having success at that time, who were they, right? Cole Hawker and Cooper Tier, the poster boys of distance running over the past few years collegiately, the Oregon Ducks, right? They're always the guys that are going to be dominating the conversation and rightfully so because they brought it when the big meets mattered. Cole Hawker at the 1500 meters in the 2021 NCAA championships outkicked Nagus to win that title. Though he did not run a faster time than Nagus had on the season, he brought it when it mattered. And he also brought it in that Olympic trials run, which sent my jaw through the earth's core with that kick. And you consider the kick too. I mentioned how Nagus had such a fast close to that Wanamaker mile. We typically think of fast closes and associate them with guys like Cole Hawker. But to know that Nagus, off of that ridiculous pace that I had already mentioned beforehand, can also drop 26 sub performances in that last 200 meters indoors, that just that's just mind-boggling just how fast and how many other gears that Nagus has to go to. And it really begs a lot of questions when you consider other indoor world records like the 1500 meter mark that Jakob Ingebrigtsen set last year of 330.6. Though Nagus has never run faster than 333, to know that he can have that kind of kick really tells you a lot about his strength, let alone that 300, the 3K indoor time of 728. So 
I personally think that Jakob Ingebrigtsen has a greater chance of breaking the indoor mild world record of 347.01 than Jared Nagus currently does of breaking Ingebrigtsen's 1500 meter indoor world record of 330.6. But I do want to open up the conversation of let's suppose that Nagus had been healthy for the Olympic Games back in Tokyo. Had he been in that race with Cole Hawker, Timothy Chariot, and also Josh Kerr, who ran a 329 to take third place. That was, of course, the race that Ingebrigtsen won in 328.32. But Cole Hawker in that race ran faster than he had ever run in his life with a 331. And I'd like to think that Nagus could have also gone sub 332, if not even lower in the 331s, had he been running at that hot pace. Because when you compare him to a guy like Cole Hawker, Hawker almost thrives more generally speaking, off of a slower pace because that's when he has his explosiveness that he can go to. But Nagus, when he is running off of that quicker pace, he can almost wind it up. When you see him running in those earlier stages of the race, you see him very, very conservative with his upper body. His his arms are almost kind of like just hanging there, just waiting for that final kick. And when he goes to the arms, it is game over. So yeah, Cole Hawker, Jared Nagus, both guys that are going to be a ton of fun to watch as the season goes on. Cooper Tier as well. We saw him in the 3K at Milrose coming in third behind Josh Kerr, who I mentioned earlier. And Kerr is going to be another guy really, really exciting to follow in these coming months as he ran a 7.33 to win that. And normally I'm not a proponent of guys looking over their shoulder when it comes to the final straightaway of a distance race, but the way Josh Kerr did it, it was so decisive. He was like, okay, I'm ahead of Luis Grijalva. I'm going to win this race. And yeah, that was Tier's season opener, so definitely don't take anything away from that. But when you consider the fact that Nagus opened his season in 728, just shows you the raw potential that he has over these distances. And I think that now that all of these guys are out of college, it's almost like a fresh start for them when you consider Nagus, Tier, and Hawker. Because now that Jared Nagus is with the On Athletics Club, it's it's almost been like the gift that he's needed his whole entire career because now that he has a training group that can consistently push him and that he can consistently push I mean the workouts that they've been doing have clearly the results have been showing with what Nagus has shown not just him but Ali Hoare, Joe Klecker, Mar- Mario Garcia Romo and even on the women's side with Alicia Munson setting the indoor American record in her 3k 825 and it would be pretty intriguing to see if Caitlin Tui gives them consideration once she decides to go pro in the coming years. But again, Garrett Nagus, if, if he stays consistent training with that group that we mentioned, the On Athletics Club, they're going to be definitely, definitely exciting. So much excitement when you consider the middle distances, indoors and outdoors. And I really think that this could be the year that Nagus stays consistent, stays healthy, and stays on the grind when you consider these times. And who knows? We could see him continue to improve. We could see him plateau for a while. Who knows? I want to know what you guys think, though, about Jared Nagus. Does he have more in him this season? And if so, how much more? I know Flow Track Podcast, get Kevin and Gordon, they were exploring this question as well. What is Jared Nagus's ceiling? I'm going to go ahead and give my thoughts on that right now. I think that he can, this season, I think he can run, I want to say below 330.5 in the 1500 meters. And if he goes for the 3K again, I'd like to say that he can go sub 728. And if he goes for it outdoors, perhaps maybe a 726. So those are just some some throwaway times there. We've yet to see what he can do in the 5K. I know Woody Kincaid's going to be exciting to watch in that as well. But yeah, a whole lot of interesting developments on the middle distance front, and we've yet to even see Jakob Ingebrigtsen race. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. And if I missed anything, don't, don't hesitate to let me know below. Subscribe if you enjoyed and would like to see more. And if you would like to see more, comment below what you'd like to see. With all that being said, I hope you guys have a great day and uh, happy Valentine's Day. I don't exactly have a Valentine's Day track pun for you guys, so you best, uh, you, you'd be better off just running along if you catch my drift. Eh? <laughs> all right, guys, have a great day.
Peace.